Thank you, Dr. Hudson. So hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, again, the title of my ALE is Developing a Media Strategy to Minimize Loss to Follow-Up in the Pediatric HIV AIDS Cohort Study, or FACTS, Using Photo Voice. So just around the public health problem, in terms of observational studies, we find that there's a lack, lack of attention to the attrition or gradual reduction in the number of child participants. And as they age into young adults, we find that they have barriers, including uh, demanding, uh, demanding, uh, competing demands of time, relocating geographically, study fatigue, stigma of the disease, or uh, health literacy. And what I thought was that this presented significant implications for facts. And while there's no direct evidence for any risk of ad adverse health outcomes to disengaging or withdrawing from the study, I believe that there was still a potential for negatively impacting their not only healthcare access, but as well as their antiretroviral therapy adherence. And so in the literature, we know that adolescents are uh, prone to having issues with adherence to ART while living with HIV. And so that could therefore leave uh, uh, lead to a quality decrease in quality of life and adverse health outcomes. And so the, the goal of the, the project in itself was to how do we engage uh, the young adult cohort in keeping them in the study, but also using communication practices in, in doing so. So just a little bit more about the study. It's a study that started in 2005. Uh, as you can see here, it's a multi-center study. There's 21 sites, 12 states included, and Puerto Rico. And it basically, it's a longitudinal cohort study that investigates the long-term effects of HIV infection and ART among children and young adults either born with HIV or those exposed but uninfected. And I did my uh, ALE with the Harvard School of Public Health here in Boston. And their role in the entire network of study in, of the study is to serve as the Data and Operations Center, or DOC. And what they do is they provide research expertise, and that includes design, methodology, and analysis, and as well as maintaining and supporting the development of websites, which is more relevant to my ALE. So here's just sort of a graphic of where they are located. So I divided my objectives into three steps. The first was to uh, use photo voice to identify themes and identity, and I'll uh, explain how I came to identity in a minute, among community advisory board members or CAB members. And they're basically a uh, body of people that give uh, input from the community and that they reflect the interests of the participants and caregivers. So I sought that from the CAB members. The second was to design a web-based media strategy, because we all love technology, using a theoretical framework. And this strategy was for the Health Education and Communication Committee, which Claire is the chair of. And so the last was to um, take the photos generated from Photo Voice and make that into a compilation video and see what were the reactions to that, you know, showing the work that they've done and then being able to write up recommendations for the media strategy for informative research and findings from Photo Voice. So just talking more Bill, about Photo Voice since like, I think I'm the only one who did it for this semester. So Photo Voice is also known as participatory photo elicitation. And basically, it's a process that allows participants to identify, represent, and enhance their community through specific photographic technique. And that the meat of the research is more so from the story or meanings behind the photo, not the photo itself. And so in essence, they really become co-researchers in the project. And I just wanted to not go into much so much detail, but just introduce the framework that I used for making the media strategy recommendations. I chose the elaboration likelihood model, which posits that we process messages two ways. Uh, there's the central route where we have higher involvement or motivation and knowledge in being able to elaborate on these messages. And then there's the peripheral route uh, where there's less involvement, there's uh, lower motivation and less knowledge. And this is where I think those who are going to disengage from the who are thinking of withdrawing from the study are probably going to be at around the peripheral route. So just going to run through the, method, method, the methods that I used. Uh, so we did recruitment through first blanket emails to all the CAB sites. So you know this is all over the US. And then we um, started emailing specific individuals. We saw we were not getting a, you know, a high turnout. And so we also provided training because uh, there's photography involved. I produced a 16-minute Prezi presentation um, and made it into a YouTube video. And that just sort of gave them the basics of the project, rules and guidelines, 
the uh, expectations that they had and some photography basics, like how to take a good picture and how to make captions. So before doing photo voice, we asked, there's two cabs. There's the young adult cab, which consists of participants in the study, and there's also an adult cab, which consists of uh, caregivers, researchers, and healthcare staff. And we asked the young adult cab to sort of brainstorm a theme to center the photo voice activity around, and they came up with identity, or specifically, quote, I am who I am, not because you define me. And so that was the theme that we selected for the photo voice activity. And so when we got a good number of participants, we gave them about five weeks to take pic uh, pictures around their community, um, centered around theme, uh, the theme of identity, and then they submitted their photos and captions with those photos back to us via email. So we want to follow up that photo voice activity with a focus group discussion, which was done with a teleconference. So again, multi-center, we had to do this through the phone. And what we did was that we took the photos and captions of each participant and we gave that as a PowerPoint PDF compilation so that they can follow along with each other and see what pictures that other participants have taken. And we wanted to sort of create critical dialogue around uh, how did they feel or what, what did they take from the photo voice process, what are the stories behind the photos, and what are the themes that they wanted to um, use for the video compilation at the end. And so the analysis uh, just sort of consisted of the findings from my for formative research or literature review and um, also reviewing the focus group for more implicit, indirect themes. So going into the results, the scripted stats, um, we had a total of six participants. Two were from the young adult cab, four from the adult cab. In terms of the photos themselves, we had a total of 30 photos. The majority were t shot by the participant. The rest were either um, photos of printed photos or retrieved from the internet. And of those shot by the participant, half were either of the environment or scenery or specific subjects or self-portraits. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So this sort of the main findings of the focus group. When we asked them to make up themes for the video, uh, we came up with four. The first was about this debunking of stereotypes, about you know, don't judge a book by its cover. The second was about layered or multiple identities. A uh, picture says a thousand words. The second theme was about overcoming stigma related to HIV. So let my picture, sh let my picture show my thousand words and not my HIV. And the last, because of the, the theme of the photo voice, we had one on self-identity at the individual level. So before going into my media strategy recommendations, I just want to talk about discussion first. And so from the very positive feedback that we got from the participants and stakeholders looking at the video, you know, asking let's do this on other themes, we, we do think that there is a positive or possible impact if we do this on other facts participants. And that um, all the, also other photo voice studies done with populations affected by HIV, whether it's access to healthcare, stigma, or social support has shown positive effect. But at the more higher level, uh, broader level of research, uh, because photo voice is still new, um, there's still little research about you know, the validity of whether those outcomes at the end related to health actually happen. At also at the theoretical level, we don't know which theories work. So, um, but some qualitative, qualitative studies do show that there is positive effect. So in terms of the implications for the future, uh, in terms of facts, if they were to uh, continue doing projects like these, um, it would be good to also conduct a needs assessment to see what needs need to be addressed for participants to fully participate, whether it's access to a computer, access to a camera, um, those sort of things. And but also we want to think about evaluation. We want to see if this intervention is actually reaching the uh, participants and keeping them retained in the study. Um, and so being able to take process and outcome evaluation. Process meaning how many visits are on the website, how many likes, how many comments, we all know about that, social media. And then outcomes, how do we, is there a relationship between how they're engaging with these communication platforms and their retention in the study? And this further research because there's low research. So the media strategy uh, came out in four parts. And I'll explain how, um, why I came up with each one. The first was, uh, sort of to continue using participatory media, that's the broader term, but photo voice is pretty much what I use. And being able to do that again with other relevant themes, but keeping in mind 
that participants have constraints. So doing that with other themes is one. And the second is a digital story map. So a story map, in a nutshell, is a web feature that shows a map, depending where you are, and you're able to geotag different sites, locations, and then you can post content, whether it's text, pictures, video. But right now, the story map that's accessible to the young adults only use text. And so being able to revamp that to use pictures, images, and video to be able to share those stories uh, that way. The third is to uh, consider creating a social media network. Uh, this was confirmed from a previous AOLE done with Facts as well, is that they want a social media platform, but it might have to be a private one, so I suggested that they uh, make a, thank you, a private digital network, which is a term that entails that the organization is uh, in control of the network, and so that we're not dealing with the public privacy concerns of Facebook or Twitter, but rather within an internal organizational network. And the last is sort of content and topics. I did codify uh, more implicit themes from the focus group, and I also took content from uh, a resource that gave information about transitioning to adult health healthcare, which is really important when uh, child participants become young adults in regards to HIV. So just the main limitations, uh, I did use a relatively novel qualitative methodology, so there is a limited self-selected sample, there's participation bias, but I ar would argue that because the CAB members share a lot of the characteristics that uh, participants have, that there's really uh, nothing wrong with having their insight because this is more of exploration rather than a quantitative sort of project. The second is that we did all of this remotely. We did not meet with the participants in person at all, and so we may lack the, rich, the richness of responses and data if we did this in person, but again, the CAP members already meet, in, or meet through a teleconference in their monthly meetings, and so they were familiar with uh, using the phone to call in and use email, and so this was not anything new to them in terms of communication, so there's really no problem, and if anything, it made the process even better. So I just wanted to show a clip from the video. Uh, it's not the entire thing. It shows the first minute and the last 30 seconds. So some of these pers personal lessons I've learned, um, this is the first time I've worked with a really wide team, which is, but you know, I think that you know, being able to be comfortable with uncertainty and having a plan B and being flexible, and that came about with the lack of recruitment, uh, participant constraints, and the revision of lengthy materials that I should have not made too long. Um, but it really boiled down to uh, being able to collaborate and communicate with everyone involved. That's not only my preceptor, but her colleagues participants and stakeholders in the committee. 
Um, and uh, again, like Dr. Hudson has mentioned, I did some work about around HIV communication and messaging. And I think that being able to be the voice of these participants and being able to use that to make this video uh, really touched me and it, you know, it made me feel really good that you know, I could use my tech skills to make a video that really shared the stories of, of the participants. So I really loved that about it. So I, <laughs> I apologize if that video didn't work, uh, but I just wanted to acknowledge Claire Berman, who's right there, uh, for all of her hard work in being in every step of the way, being able to text on a short notice. Uh, and I also wanted to take, uh, thank Dr. Kochweiser, uh, for a concentration leader for conceptualizing the project and looking through the final paper. And I also want to also thank Dr. Hudson, who's been with every step of the way, has, yeah, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. And oh, um, also um, including uh, Megan Resnick um, and Dominique Wilson, who are part of the FACTS team. Uh, they've been a part of the project from the beginning of AOLE planning, and so without their input, this would have not been able to happen. Any questions? Um, very nice. Thank you for sharing that. It's so fun. Yeah, um, you. Maybe you mentioned this. How, how's the video going to be used? What, what's its next? Well, I'm glad that you asked that. <laughs> so uh, right now, it's up on YouTube privately, but we are planning to show, uh, share the video with all the other, uh, uh, the, the entire team at FACTS, and that they actually have a fall retreat uh, coming soon involving both cabs. And so we're going to be showing a slideshow of the photos. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to use this slideshow or both the video and the slideshow. Um, but we'll be showcasing this work to those who you know don't have don't know about it yet. But is it to is it to help raise awareness of HIV? What, what are you trying to get more participants or uh, because I the right? What's the reason? So, uh, from my knowledge, because this was the first photo voice project that was done directly in facts, we wanted to first see what themes. Uh, the young adult cab wanted to do photo voice on. So the, you know, the fact that they did identity, I think um, from the feedback, feedback that we've uh, received um, that there's really more interest in doing it on other themes. So maybe using this video as a way to attract further and future opportunities to conduct other photo voice projects uh, among other, op you know, giving other, others a voice as well. So, and yeah, there's definitely a lot of ways to share this with the power of YouTube. Okay. Just Rob, the, the, the ultimate event I think we started from was to try and keep children in these studies yes. right. into, yes. through their teen years into young adulthood. Yes. So is there a strategy yet on using this for that purpose, or this is still sort of formative? I mean, right. are, 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 do you think that the video itself might mm -hmm. just be made available to people in the study as a way of mm -hmm. you know, keeping their identity as linked to? Right. So the long-term goal is definitely retaining them uh, and keeping them engaged in the project, especially with young adults. So I think the video just sort of represents the, what, what could be, uh, be possible if they also uh, created a platform for sharing photos, whether it's like Flickr or Instagram. But because of the privacy concerns we have with those public um, social media, uh, that's not really possible yet. And so the video was more of a way to showcase the work uh, you know, in a way that was easy and not just, uh, it's, it's sort of a hint that more projects like these are coming. Uh, and so it's not really directly trying to, and no, and you know, there's gonna be that indirect, oh, I really resonate with this in terms of identity. So there's always that affirmation that's possible. But in terms of, I guess, my project purposes, it's really engagement. Thank you. Thank you.